What's up everyone, my name is Nanad and I'm a legal intern at Lexus and & Company and I'm also a student of the Maharashtra National University, Mumbai. In today's video, we're going to be talking a bit about the custodial violence and death in India. So let's get started. Now, custodial violence basically means the violence suffered by any person or in police or judicial custody. On the same lines, custodial death refers to a form of death caused by such custodial violence. Now, in spite of a lot of legal provisions provided in Indian legislation, namely in the IPC, the CRPC, the Evidence Act, as well as the Police Act, custodial violence and related death is still very rampant in India. For a statistic, uh, the report titled uh, India Annual Report on Torture 2019 noted that through 2019, India witnessed uh, 1,606 deaths in judicial custody and further 125 deaths in police custody. This brings the total number of deaths to 1,731 for only this one year. If we do the math, it accounts for around 5 such deaths on a daily basis for the complete year of 2019. This statistic alone is definitely enough to make us realize the importance and pressing concern of this issue. Now, more often than not, a lot of these cases of violence and consequential deaths happen with the police personnel using methods of torture for interrogating detained suspects. The problem is further aggravated when among such personnel there are some who strongly believe that or third degree methods are the only ones that can produce actual results when it comes to criminals or apparently accused criminals. There are also others who are simply blinded by the greed for money or power, the prospects of which might have been or are certainly as we know are being brought before them by relevant beneficiaries in related cases. Even barring these usual instances, there are numerous other reasons like pressures from higher ups in the profession, sadism, etc. that contribute to the increase in custodial violence and death, not just in India but in the rest of the world as well. As such, there is definite need for specifically targeted anti-torture legislation to curb such harmful practices once and for all. Conventional trials and conviction become especially difficult in cases of public officials. This is because of a variety of reasons. Firstly, under Section 197 of the CRPC, no government official or member of the armed forces alleged to have committed a criminal offence while acting or purporting to act in the discharge of their official duty can be prosecuted uh, without the prior sanction of the central or state government. Further, although India has already signed the United Nations Convention Against Torture uh, in more than 24 years ago, it is still yet to ratify it. Ratifying the convention would hence ensure that the state is responsible for the harm inflicted by its departments on its citizens. But India has taken no such step uh, in relation to ratifying the convention at all. Lastly, there is also a severe need for structural reforms like rebuilding the foundational training programs for the police force, focusing more on human rights and reasons for their presence and application, while simultaneously ensuring that law and order, as well as the safety of individual citizens, is at the topmost priority and the foremost priority of these police personnel. Such reformative legislation is hence very, very necessary to reduce the plight of those who have already suffered and also to prevent the sufferings of those for who for any reasons whatsoever might get involved in the cycle of law and might face such suffering in the future. That is all for this video. If you learned something from it, do definitely consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Uh, it helps us out a lot. Do comment down below any questions, suggestions, opinions or queries you might have regarding the video. That's all. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a good one.